guess I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, hello, everyone. First, it's, um, it's great to be here at uh, Can't Small Talk uh, Supreme. It's been a while, <clears throat> excuse me, since I've been in Toronto, and I'm really enjoying it so far. Uh, it's just as nice as I remembered, and I had a chance to try my first uh, Canadian red wine uh, just a couple of nights ago. It was very good. And if you know anything about me, it won't be the last. Um, many of you probably have seen me over the years uh, and hopefully gotten to know me a little bit. So I won't spend too much time uh, introducing myself, but for those who maybe are new or don't know me, I'm Seth Berman, uh, President and CEO of Instantiations. Uh, I started working with the Instantiations team in 2011. And even though I'm the CEO, I'm, I'm still heavily involved in engineering the engineering side of the business uh, as time allows, since I also have to manage the business. And uh, for those that are not kind of familiar with instantiations, uh, we're the developers of the VAST platform, which is formerly known as VA Smalltalk. Uh, and I also want to thank uh, Richard for organizing this great event, giving us the opportunity to uh, reconnect in one place after uh, quite a few atypical years. And if you, if I, um, haven't caught up with you already, I look forward to doing so a little later. But <clears throat> before we get started, I, j I just wanted to share a little bit of unhappy news for those of you that haven't heard. Um, earlier this year, we lost a, a longtime member of the Small Talk community um, and sort of an original founder of CEO uh, uh, and CEO of Instantiations, uh, Mike Taylor. Mike had an incredible career that sort of helped to build and lead Instantiations uh, for its 30 plus year history and in turn had a tremendous impact uh, on this community. And when I assumed ownership and role of CEO of Instantiations about five years ago, um, Mike graciously accepted my request to stay on as our board chairman and uh, advisor. So, you know, he was well known by our current staff um, and will be greatly missed. And of course, he was a great mentor and friend of mine. So for Mike's family and other friends, Instanti Instantiations and I offer our our deepest condolences. So thank you for letting me share that. Uh, now let's, we'll move back to stuff that's a little less heavy. Uh, so this is gonna be the first of three back-to-back -back talks uh, today, and I hope you'll have the stamina to sit through all three of them, uh, because we have some really interesting topics uh, to cover, and we'll be adding some depth and content uh, that isn't available on our website. But don't worry, we'll take some time uh, for some breaks. So let's start with the company update on instantiations, which is namely what we've been up to for the past year and where we're headed in the future. Then we'll talk about the VAST platform 2022 and some of the cool features uh, that made the cut for this year's major release. And finally, we'll get into what's coming next in VAST 2023. So sound good? So let's do it. So you heard enough about me at this point, um, but I did want to introduce a newer member of the Instantiations team, who is our marketing creative director, Greg Schultz. He is the reason that, that these slides and things look the way that they do, among other things, our website and a, and a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Greg's been with us almost three years at this point, and many of the improvements at Instantiations from yeah, the new branding, the new website, to our reinvigorated marketing and social media presence is the result of, of Greg's hard work. And so he'll be giving the second part of this presentation today about VAST 2022 and VAST 2023. So with that, let's start with a review of 2021 and 2022. So during this year or two of difficulty and uncertainty caused by, frankly, you know, many issues around the globe, uh, we're still, we've still managed to grow, which is really exciting. So new customers have come on, come on board and even some current customers are expanding their licensing, and we love, obviously, to see that. So how is this happening? Well, I think it's clear that we've been investing in VAST, and when our customers see that, they, in turn, continue to invest in us to keep VAST moving forward for the long term, regardless of the recent short-term hardships that we're all facing. And with their continued investment in VAST, Instantiations has been providing them with essential support services, and help to keep their mission critical systems running well. Uh, ensuring the service is high quality is extremely important to us. So we, frank we frequently send out support surveys uh, to make sure we know how we did. And so the result is 
you know, these surveys show support experiences with our engineers uh, have been overwhelmingly positive for years and years. And in fact, many customers have stated that uh, instantiations feels like an extension of their own development teams. And outside of, um, outside of um, the direct support, um, we've, sorry, I lost my place a little bit, just one second. We have, the, we have the guy who can create this stuff, but then ultimately somebody has to give the, uh, the talk, which isn't his degree, so. Um, outside of the sort of um, direct support, continued customer investment also allows us to fund ongoing research and development. So R&D has been kind of at the core of Instantiation's culture since its founding in 1988. And it allows us to keep supporting our customers through uh, regular releases of relevant features that are stable and production ready for every single layer of the stack. From our new ARM virtual machine and new communication protocols uh, for the web to a native table widget uh, for thick client applications. And we continue to deliver essential and forward looking uh, improvements. And as a direct result of our R&D, we of course not only produce new features using our current technologies of choice, but we frequently make use of new technologies that can incorporate, that we can incorporate and use within VAST. So this new tech can fundamentally improve the new user experience, the user experience of the product, and be it new capabilities or increased performance or both, all while continuing uh, to provide the unparalleled stability that VAST is certainly known for. So for example, um, the Rust language is a fantastic lower level language. Uh, for those that don't know, it's now the second uh, official language of the Linux kernel. And it gave us an extremely solid technology base to streamline the development of our advanced Unicode implementation and make it more performant. So I'll talk about that in the next presentation. And then there's Google's Dart and the complementary UI focus framework Flutter which has uh, provided a proven set of asynchronous technologies that we've actually ported to VAST. And so Mariano will speak more about the asynchronous programming in his talk later. And finally, there's the Toit language. And this is an interesting piece of tech related to the Internet of Things. So in short, it allows object-oriented programming with an approach that seems really similar to Smalltalk uh, to occur on small microcontroller devices like ESP32s. And we all know that VAST requires an operating system uh, like Windows or Linux uh, for installation, but Toit goes where VAST can't on these tidy little boards, um, with, which has its own virtual machine that makes it really fast and it's on average you know, about 20 times faster than MicroPython, which a lot of that community uses. And so for, the, for those that want to work with ESP32s to collect data for an IoT system, it's easy to control toy devices and manage them directly with VAST uh, through using our OS process framework. But the benefits of this R&D didn't stop uh, with features being added to, to the latest VAST release. The broader community has benefited too. So earlier this year, using our knowledge of Toit, uh, we posted a presentation at an IoT event uh, for students uh, that, uh, at a local community college in Raleigh and uh, to learn more about this programming language and, and IoT technology. And in fact, uh, we brought some of the uh, kits that we provided for the students, um, and uh, Mariana will be happy to uh, provide a demo for anybody that wants to see that technology. And we also have a forum that continues to be active with discussions uh, with VAST and related technology. So if you haven't checked out the VAST community forum, I highly suggest that you do so. And finally, Instantiations has regularly contributed to open source projects like those found in our GitHub, the VAST Community Hub, which is also in GitHub, and uh, Dart and Flutter related projects, which you can find on pub.dev. So as you can see, the past year has been pretty eventful. Uh, we know how to stay busy at Instantiations. So what then is the future of Instantiations? And it really comes down to building bridges with other communities and using new technologies. So at a very high level, we're constantly reviewing what we do to improve ourselves and the VAST platform. And one way we're doing this is to kind of look outward. For every community, Smalltalk included, 
uh, needs infusion of new ideas. And so for us, this means getting inspired by great technologies, approaches, and lessons learned from others, and adapting them to the needs of VAST and instantiations. So for example, languages like Dart, Rust, and Swift have provided some great building blocks and tools for our asynchronous frameworks and Unicode support library. Now, looking outward is not just about inspiration, uh, but also sharing our expertise, too. So we've seen significant adoption of our port of VAST's compression library to the Dart programming language. And uh, with the Toit language, we're looking at ways to improve that community's development experience as well. So we're sure that continuing this approach will yield uh, other useful exchanges in the future as well. Now, building bridges between communities through sharing and porting code is, of course, mutually beneficial. But it ultimately ends up educating other developers outside our community about Smalltalk as well. So by taking this approach, we feel uh, that it's possible to grow vast in its usage beyond just the Smalltalk community. So in truth, it all starts with a meaningful exchange of technology and ideas. So again, this is another reason why we are looking outward and we think it's such a great thing to do. And with this exchange of information plus our continuous R&D, we'll keep bringing new things to the table. So VAS is a great orchestration platform for various technologies. And with web-based capabilities becoming more and more important, we'll be focusing on new communication technologies and protocols. And our newly async technology is part of that story as well. So these are the use cases we're optimizing for because this is where a lot of the active development is happening with our customers. But we'll still continue in addr addressing all layers of the stack for thick client applications where there is demand to do so. But we must anticipate the features needed for development in the future, so we must be more forward looking. Also related to our future, it should go kind of without saying that we'll maintain a continued focus on supporting the small talk community. Uh, in the coming years, we'll be sharing more expertise in the form of useful articles and documentation, plus hosting webinars and in-person events. And additionally, even though we're a commercial small talk provider, we think it's important to get more involved uh, in the open source side of small talk and use our time and resources to further some community projects. After all, we think a strong small talk community is good for all dialogue. And even though I've mentioned it before, I want to reiterate that the primary driver in our business, both now and in the future, uh, is supporting our customers and fulfilling their needs. So ultimately, without their support, we wouldn't be here. So whether it's work related to the VAST platform uh, or other essential technologies, our customers can count on us to help. But while it's important for everyone to know where we're coming from and where we're going, I'd like to go ahead and kind of pull it back to the present so you can see how the strategies of the past year and our ideas for the future have influenced our latest release, which is VAST 2022. And that sort of leads us to the next part of our presentation, and for that I'll be handing it off to Greg. All right, uh, hi everyone, uh, uh, thanks Seth. Uh, as Seth said earlier, my name is Greg Schultz, and I'm Marketing and Creative Director at Instantiations. I've been with the Instantiations almost three years at this point. And I have a background in marketing, design, some front-end web development in there too. And, uh, you know, I really came to Instantiations because I love working with engineering and development teams. So Instantiations seemed like a real natural fit for me. It seemed right up my alley, so to speak. So. You know, feel free to come talk to me after the presentation. I'd love to get to know all you guys uh, a little bit more. And, uh, and, but without further delay, let's start talking about our latest release, uh, VAST Platform 2022. And for those that like to go by the version numbers, this, we're currently on 11. So it, it's not every release that we come out with a completely new platform we're targeting. So ARM is an exciting addition to VAST. Uh, Again, this feature has been in the works for a while, so if you attended a Camp Small Talk we hosted a couple years ago uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, in the United States, um, you know, we, we kind of debuted earlier versions and earlier builds of this technology uh, using our server Small Talk technology, SST. And we did a little remote control car that we kind of did some remote debugging on, and we kind of moved it around a, a 
the table, um, all on the fly making changes. So again, a, a kind of a, a cool, compelling you know story for IoT on that front. Um, but now, uh, the current release supports version 7 and version 8 uh, ARM processors, so both 32 and 64 bit as a result. And uh, Linux is also supported uh, for ARM as well. And Windows for ARM is just around the corner. We're working on it now, and it'll be coming to VAST 2023. But we'll be talking a little bit more about that uh, in the later part of the presentation. So the question might be, OK, so why, why is ARM processor support with, with JIT? Why is that important? So really it comes down to more deployment options. Um, and you know, of those deployment options, they tend to be more cost effective and energy efficient than say Intel and AMD based targets. So, uh, so if you're wanting to do stuff in the cloud, so Amazon AWS instances and their new Graviton 2 ARM based processors, all the way down to single board computers like a Raspberry Pi, uh, all the newest ones will tend to work on, on uh, VAST with ARM. And so it, it kind of gives a really good compelling option as far as new deployment options and things that you can target. And it's also important to say that, you know, with the Raspberry Pi, it's not just a headless deployment option. It is a head full, full uh, development environment that can run on the Raspberry Pi. So really gives some great options on that front. Uh, the final thing I wanted to note relating to ARM and VAST is how it really comes with an IoT friendly aspect to it too. Um, in fact, you know, with our live and remote debugging that Smalltalk has and uh, the energy efficient JIT that VAST has, it can be a great asset for certain IoT related projects. So if you want to learn more about uh, the remote debugging energy efficiency of JITs as it relates to you know, VAST and, and IoT, uh, we have some videos on our YouTube channel about them you can kind of check out and, and learn a little bit more. Uh, the next feature we'll talk about is our Unicode support library. And uh, we know this feature has been requested quite a bit, but it took some time to get it absolutely correct before we released it. So as part of this release, uh, it is the Unicode standard version 14, which is the latest uh, version of Unicode. And uh, as part of this implementation, all Unicode normalization is automatically handled by default. So that means you don't have to worry about you know, silent errors and things happening behind the scenes that you're not aware of, maybe messing things up later, you know, some causing data issues later and you wouldn't even know about it. So uh, that's, that's a great feature to have and Seth will talk a little bit more about that in his presentation as to the importance of that. And also part of this implementation is our un new Unicode string maintains full API compatibility with our current string and character. Uh, again, this is important, uh, just, you know, we, we can't not factor in the past. We have to think about, you know, what's been done before and how to bridge these things. And Seth will also talk about in his presentation a little bit later about you know, how to bridge these, the old and the new, or the current and the new, however you want to uh, dub it. Um, beyond just making our Unicode support library work, it also, in our view, had to be highly performant. So we used uh, SIMD, which is hardware level parallelism to in short, uh, as well as just-in-time optimizations and copy on write methodologies to really make this super fast. In, in fact, you know, if we're talking about UTF-8 and ASCII validation, we can do a validation at upwards of 20 gigabytes a second. So super fast, and uh, it's really some exciting stuff on that front. But I don't want to spoil, again, some cool surprises Seth will uh, talk about, so I'm not going to get too much into that. Um, the last uh, part is, and of course with small talk, this is extremely important, is IDE integrations. And as part of this implementation, we've added encoding aware workspaces and even new Unicode object inspectors to facilitate this new technology that we're implementing with the VAST. So uh, next, uh, there's also asynchronous streams and zones. And this is to complement our existing features and promises framework that we released last year in VAST 2021. So uh, as part of that, uh, you know, just a brief overview of what these are. So streams is Streams are, uh, you know, they provide data and or events that can be used along with our features and promises framework. And zones uh, control, monitor, and share data between asynchronous activities within your program. So obviously these are a little bit hard to uh, explain and I will not do as good of a job as what Mariana will do in, a, in, a, in one of the next presentations, so I'll leave that to him. But 
You'll have some great examples of how they work and further and deeper explanations that will really kind of get into the meat of, of what all this is. Um, and uh, finally, I did want to mention the streamed HTTP content retrieval uh, feature that we've added to VAST 2022. And it allows you to retrieve large pieces of streamed HTTP content and asynchronously process these large files and smaller pieces for improved efficiency. So practically speaking, you can start downloading a large chunk of data, and before it's fully download, you, downloaded, you can start processing it. Or uh, you, know, you can eliminate the need to allocate larger blocks of memory for multi-gigabyte data transfer. So it's really just all about efficiency, making things run a little bit smoother when you're dealing with these large files. Uh, now, security is always important, and that's one of the main reasons why we've uh, prioritized OpenSSL 3 for this release, for VAST 2022. So, as you can imagine, keeping up to date with the latest security standards could be difficult, but thankfully this framework makes it pretty straightforward. Uh, so, for those who haven't used it yet, it's a high-level object-oriented wrapper around OpenSSL that's easy to use. And with that, uh, cri the crypto wrapper is also backwards compatible with older versions, so 0.9.8 through 1.1.x. Uh, it, it just makes you know, the process a lot more streamlined and simple as far as implementing this. And uh, also, uh, for those that are in financial institutions and they're using this kind of uh, technology and similar verticals, uh, the FIPS module support has been added for OpenSSL 3. And <clears throat> And also, uh, more cryptographic algorithms and SSL modules have been just added in general. And again, when we're talking about usability and keeping things straightforward, everything that we've added has examples uh, provided for, for all of it. So you can just take a look, dive in, and you're not having to reinvent the wheel as far as figuring out how these things work. You can just look at the examples right there. And finally, we have some other important features that are worth mentioning too. Uh, lots, lots came out in VAST 2022. Uh, the first one is our Windows Table Widget Common Control. So that gives a real good native look and feel over VAST and much better control of row and column data. And so you can kind of see how, what that looks like on the right-hand side of the slide over there. Uh, also, we have automated build support being added been added, so you can build and package without ever having to manually interact with the image or the GUI. And this can be useful in the context of things like continuous integration and other levels of automation that we're that you can do with VAST now. Uh, to add to this, we also have our transcript log to text file output feature, which it, it can be used for troubleshooting, interacting with other programming languages, or you can even monitor your transcript in an external program like Notepad++. So, it gives you lots of cool options. Uh, you can also turn off text display in the transcript and only write to the file, or if you wanted to, you could turn both off, suppressing all the output if that is gonna work best for your uh, you know, stuff that you're doing. Also, for those who uh, use multiple monitors and their workflow, uh, now we've kind of improved that support, so you can spawn consistently windows on the active monitor you're using instead of just the primary screen as it's defined in Windows. So, um, and this, again, pro just provides a more intuitive experience for those using that multi-screen approach when they're, when they're doing uh, programming coding. Uh, additionally, a new FTP, FTPS support is built into VAST, so now you can you know, programmatically transfer files securely. Uh, you can even build your own FTP client if you wanted to. Um, and Additionally, beyond that, uh, our Tonal Tools framework, and we've talked about this before, but it enables the file-based version control to kind of augment what NV is doing. And these tools have been expanded and improved to better support cross-dialect code migrations and offer more configuration options to really fine-tune the loading for, for those using Tonal. In fact, uh, with these Tonal 2 updates, uh, we ate our own dog food, as they say, and we use them to port the latest version of Seaside uh, to VAST. And this kind of sets us up for uh, you know, easier and more frequent updates, because we're using the main branch of the Seaside uh, project on GitHub at this point, so we don't have our own specialized version. It's just we're all kind of pulling it in together here. And uh, if you want to know if you want to know more about the process that was done to uh, port Seaside, as well as look at the scripts that we used to make it happen and get some other insights about that whole project, uh, 
if you go to the news section of our website, there's an article written by Mariano of kind of going through all the details. So there's some great info there that if you're looking at uh, porting your own stuff over from other dialects or uh, just looking at how it all works, it's, it's a great place to stop by. Um, we've also, oops, wrong button. Uh, we've also had some packaging and XD improvements, and uh, these improvements have done some great things for especially our biggest customers, where they've seen uh, increases of up to six times in their uh, packaging uh, speed and uh, efficiency and how all that works. Uh, so if you've got a larger system, you know, uh, Vast 11 could be great from that standpoint to kind of speed up that whole process. Uh, compression algorithm updates, so, you know, Rotley, LZ, 4Z standard are all also always, or also up to date on the latest version. And uh, with that, SQLite has also been updated too on the latest and greatest. Um, and uh, we've even added a CRC 32C uh, algorithm that just really kind of helps improve performance on the newest processors. So if you use that, then uh, it's, uh, it's ready to go for you as well. And uh, finally, as far as features for VAST 2022, uh, we now have Windows 11 and Server 2022 support, even though it's you know, just been out. Uh, in fact, uh, internally, most of us are all running Windows 11 natively, and uh, even our staff running Mac OS, you know, if they're on Intel and then they're virtualizing it, it's pretty quick. And if they're on M1 and they're emulating and virtualizing it, it's, it's still fast and snappy, and it's just, uh, uh, it's a great development experience with this newest OS, regardless of kind of where you're at. So, with that, we're coming to VAST 2023. So, so what's coming in our next release? Uh, in our next release, uh, you know, we are of course going to dive deeper into the Unicode integration that, we'll, that Seth will be talking about more, and and that's going to be kind of pushing the integration into all the deeper parts, all the deeper corners of of uh, the VAST platform with, with Unicode. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, VAT Windows 11 support for ARM is officially coming to VAST 2023 as well. So again, you won't have to worry about that emulation layer if you're on an M1 Mac anymore. And of course, if you have a native Windows 11 uh, ARM device, then it'll work even better at that point too on that. Uh, also coming are an improved you know, improving the existing through a diff and code comparison tool and profiler, uh, also coming up. Uh, we have an MQTT client version three and version five. So version five is a little bit more rare to have. We're gonna have both three and five. Uh, WebSockets is also coming as part of VAST 2022. That'll have a bit of a story that'll kind of cross over to MQTT, uh, the implementation for that as well. And uh, in VAST 2022, we re released the Windows Table Widget Common Control. And in 2023, there'll be additional updates and integration with that as well. So the Common Widget layer will have an integration with uh, this, this new uh, widget. And if you're inclined to use the Window Builder, ABT Visual Builders, it'll, we'll have an integration with that in coming in 2023 as well. And uh, high DPI improvements that we started back in VAST uh, 9.2 are still continuing and we're still making uh, upgrades and improvements to that high DPI system in Windows and that will continue for VAST 2023 and more. Uh, now to be clear, you know, we have, uh, the, this roadmap is not set in stone and ultimately we put a lot of weight on prioritizing customer needs. So if something important comes up meanwhile, then we always like to, you know, shift that into the roadmap for the next release where we can. Uh, so we, we do our best to accommodate on that front and we shift some things around if need be when that happens. So uh, the plan at this point for VAST 2023 is a release, of Q, is a release in Q1 of 2023. Uh, so uh, look forward to some more you know, announcements on that kind of near the end of the year. We'll kind of give an update on where we're at, maybe talk about some key features, update the roadmap, things like that. So with that, uh, that is the first presentation, and uh, thank you for uh, sitting here, and I'd like to open it up to some questions for Seth and I. Yeah, go ahead. You added an FTP client. Have you considered adding the Amazon AWS SDK to S3? So we can stop using FTP if... That's, <coughs> a, that's a good question, <laughs> Seth. No, so, <laughs> so the, um, so AWS integration, that's a, so we actually have, uh, we're talking about control, we 
have a uh, sort of up out in our community GitHub some AWS packages. That one's not currently linked. There's like a hundred different things we could do. Um, so we can take a look at that. If it's not currently planned, uh, we, like we said, we kind of go off these uh, what our current customers are sort of asking for in FTP. FTP has some kind of something on that list. Right. But, but I mean, Amazon, you have your single point of sale, your service. But it supports from the uh, Faro thing. That one also is out there. Yeah, so if you go to the Vast Community Hub on GitHub, there's something in there called AWS Tools, and that should be in there. It's not perfect, but it's good. Yeah. <laughs> it is perfect, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, any other questions, guys? Yeah. Do you have a hypothetical conversion for the security systems? We do. <coughs> and in fact, it's linked on our website. Yeah, if you go to the pricing page uh, in, the, in the small type uh, under the pricing for the VAST platform, there's a link that says academic licenses. You can click that, and that'll give you the information to contact us about uh, academic licensing. Is it free or is it a free subscription? It's free. Academic free. licensing is free, yes. Okay, student and Yeah, student and faculty, yep. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it.